So I have a very special guest on today. My guest in this interview is a role model in Lighthouse and a beacon of compassion, a friend to many non-human species and above all, a dear friend to me that continues to inspire me. She's been a vegan for 17 years. She was in optics for almost three decades before she started advocating for animal rights with Beauty Without Cruelty, an animal rights organization based in Cape Town, South Africa. Started the No Frog Ra SA campaign in 2006 with several notable successes over the years. SAA Business Class, Cape Grace Hotel, the one and only Sun City, Table Bay Hotel. It's, in, it's incredible how many, you know, restaurants and establishments supported that, right? But let me continue. Um, the Table Bay Hotel and throughout the country, several high-end restaurants, deadies and stores have chosen to make positive changes. Notable positive, uh, yeah, notable folks such as Nobel laureates J.M. Jam, Katsia and Desmond Tutu are among those who supported the cause and pledged to never consume it. Um, that's amazing, Tony. Tony started with Beauty Without Cruelty in 2009 and is the current chairperson for the last several years. She's the author of the Beauty Without Cruelty, Living Without Cruelty cookbook and the Compassionate Kitchen cookbook. 100% of the proceeds fund and support the cause. The Beauty Without Cruelty members and supporters are currently celebrating the Beauty Without Cruelty initiated bill to ban cosmetic animal testing that is finally to go before Parliament this year after five years of dedication and hard work. Tony is also a foodie of note and came third in a local meat heavy poiki competition and made the poiki for the winning team on a televised competition last year and did an international television cooking show some years ago. She was also on the first South African vegan cooking show. Tony Brockhoven, a beauty without cruelty you are indeed, indeed to me. So Tony, how are you? Very good, thank you. And thank you for having me and thank you for the very kind words. Yeah, pleasure. So tell me about the past two years. How's COVID um, been for you? And I mean, you've been, in, I almost feel like organizations have been even more busy, you know, especially animal rights organizations with, pertaining to all the regulations that have come in, you know, things are getting changed. And, and so how, what's that been like for you? Well, fortunately, because, you know, as you know, all of us are volunteers and we all have home offices. It hasn't impacted us in that respect. It has impacted us quite significantly, as I'm sure every other organization has felt in terms of, of um, financial support and so on. And that's to be expected because people were losing jobs, they weren't working as much and so on and so forth. Yeah. And I think that, that the, the animal issues have been coincidental. Um, I think a lot of the things would have happened anyway. And sometimes it was made easier by the fact that you had fewer people that you needed to deal with mm. and made more difficult by the fact that you couldn't get hold of people you would like to. So I think it was a double-edged sword. Mm. Um, but, you know, we managed to get our, our cosmetic testing bill um, gazetted last year, which was fantastic. It's now on the portfolio or the parliamentary something I can't remember the name but during one of the parliamentary meetings this year they've now confirmed that it's technically on the calendar for yeah. 2020 yeah. it's excellent news and taken us five years to, oh. to get this far and I'm actually but, getting goosebumps because you know I mean I know how much work goes into it right I mean I've seen you campaign and I've seen you write letters and I've seen you have meetings and I've heard all about it and so and to finally have that happen it's it's quite remarkable absolutely but we must also understand that um, everything that requires parliamentary input takes time and while certain things might happen fast in other countries, um, I know that it took the EU 20 years before they actually passed the cosmetic testing ban. But then, of course, there were, there were a lot more countries involved and, and it was a slightly different scenario and it, and it was the beginning. Um, here, there really is no reason for this to be a bill that is contained in any way, shape or form because there are no jobs at risk. It is a matter of, of signing on the dotted line. No job, no workers will be impacted. No businesses will be impacted um, who manufacture in South Africa. And so, yeah, it, it, it really would be an excellent milestone. And, 
and one of the one of the feathers in our collective caps because yeah. it has yeah. been long haul for for many of us. Yeah. yeah. What I've been saying to people, it almost feels you know when you're busy with the task at hand, it almost feels like it's impossible, right? Like you're never going to reach that milestone, you're never going to get over that hurdle, and then you know a couple of years down the line, all the blood, sweat, tears, hard work, hugs and kisses, and you know support mm-hmm. and and the non supporters and the non believers, and then boom, here we are, right? Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah, and so, so it's, it's worth it. it. Yeah. Yes, and, indeed. And so, Tony, I have so many questions for you, right, as always. I mean, so Tony always says to me, well, try and keep it short and sweet. And then, you know, I speak so much and, and I can never just like whoop, zip it down to things. But the reason for my um, conversation with you today was I want to talk about vegan a way of lifestyle. I want to talk about, you know, plant-based foods. I want to talk about you as an individual on this planet, you know, who's transitioned. Um, and so let me get into that, Tony. Let's yes. talk about your childhood. <laughs> what was life like for Tony as a toddler, maturing into your teenage years and then into a young adult, all while having this incredible love and compassion for animals? I think I was very lucky in that I grew up with parents who, while we're not, my, my mother was vegetarian from the adult, but um, but that was for, for that was for for health reasons, but. My my parents were always very good with making sure that we had books on, for example, the Amazon. And um, and and look, we, we didn't come from moneyed stock or privileged stock or whatever the case may be. So back in the day, you were able to get a sort of compendium of um, of, of stories and information in a reader's digest format, and it was like the first book. Almost like the, the things that you have now. The first book sort of cost a rand, but if you wanted to buy the other books that followed, they were 50 rand each. So we, okay. we had loads of those first books, but they were all about animals and, and nature and the environment and all the rest of it. And we went to see movies. You know, Jamie Ace made a couple of wonderful documentaries that we went to see. And um, and, and I remember, you know, I wanted to go and see King Kong and my father said, you're not going to like this movie because, you know, and I said, I want to go and see this movie. We went as a, and a family and I was beside myself when King Kong was killed in the end and, yeah. and the photographer <laughs> jumping onto his chest to take a photograph of him. Oh. I was completely distraught and, mm. and I didn't care that he was an animated being. Yeah. Um, it was what he represented and the fact that this is how we are in general yeah. um, and most people are kind people most people are compassionate in their own way and I actually read something very interesting this morning about the fact that we are all born innately compassionate and kind and you you very seldom see photographs or video clips of children being mean to animals yeah um, the few that are obviously have issues, which is another conversation, but by and large, we are kind and compassionate beings. Yeah. And then we're taught that, you know, you go to the zoo and you see some of these animals and then you're going to the restaurant and you eat others and that's okay. You go to the aquarium and you see these fish and then you go to the restaurant and you eat other fish. Um, and sometimes children are laughed at for, for being overly emotional and overly upset and overly concerned about animal beings. And... By the time we're seven, um, that reality has set in. Mm. So it's, it is quite something, I think, for a lot of people to try and get out of that mindset and re-find their, their natural inclination yeah. to not cause harm. Yeah. And, and that's why we have cognitive dissonance. When the heart and the brain are in conflict, um, and brain wings, you know. Yeah. Um, and and so, you know, when people, initially when people would say to me, well, you know, how do you feel now that you, and I'd say, well, you know, it, A, it's good for my heart in more ways than one. And I don't think they ever really got what I was trying to say, that it wasn't just about cholesterol, you know. Um, <laughs> and I sleep better at night yeah. because, because my conscience is clear and I know that I have not in any way intentionally contributed to harm it is not possible to live in the modern world without causing harm because yes, yes. all farming causes havoc and chaos with local environments yes. that, that is a fact yes. um you know we drive cars that are made with animal things 
the world is littered. But it is about making a decision to control that which I can. Yeah. So if I can choose to buy a pair of sandals that is made of fabric or cork or any one of the amazing leathers out there, pleathers, we'll call it pleather for, for yeah. one thing. <laughs> um, or, or use a hair product that hasn't been tested on animals and doesn't contain any animal ingredients um, or have an amazing meal, uh, then, then those will be my decisions. So I will not intentionally go to any entertainment where, well, firstly, I mean, animal circuses are, are out. That's not even yeah, up for out, negotiation. Out, out, out. Uh, out. And occasionally, oh, yes, absolutely. And occasionally I'll see a movie where animals are used. And I know that the Humane Society of America um, sort of says no animals were harmed in the making of this film and all the rest of it. And some things do concern me and others, you know, if they concern me enough, I just I don't watch anymore. Mm -hmm. um, others I'm aware of and they're a bit of a niggle and it also depends on the animal and it does depend on the animal because yeah. we know that dogs are wonderful actors and they love performing for us yeah. and we've bred them that way. We've made them that way. Yeah, yeah, we have. And so those are things we've got to take mm -hmm. cognizance of. Yeah. And, you know, so it's a very fine line. You know that I've been using this a lot, like... Um, you know, let's say animal lovers and, and vegans, for instance, would say treat all animals the same, you know, and then you go over to the hunting side and they say, well, let's treat all animals the same. Although when you speak to them on that part, then just not dogs and cats and, 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 and our domestic animals or like our pets, right? And so we do live in this society where there's a lot of sort of gray zones and a lot of dissonance and a lot of uh, speciesism and and so I mean like how do we kind of you know clear all of that so we can get on to sort of like a pivot or like get into a pivotal moment where where all this nonsense just stops and we can finally we see, can see by yeah yeah we can do yeah exactly and so Tony I mean, you know where we we stand, you know, in terms of like animals and, and our, our, you know, our yes. way of living with them. And and you obviously, I, you know, I fall into also like a different bracket. And but I know also the reasons why I do it, you know, and to yes. start the conversations with people, you know, otherwise it would have not really fallen. It would have fallen onto deaf ears, right? So yes. let's talk about, let's talk more about, um, where's my question for you? Okay. Like I'm scrolling up and down my phone because my, <laughs> my other device didn't want to work this morning. So speak to me about your turning point that had you finally fully embrace a vegan way of living and how the teachings of Buddhism, along with your choices of being kind and compassionate, have enriched your life and those you advocate for. And I also want to include the people in your life right because there's that massive you know our our lives are very much focused on animals 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 but we also have people in our life <laughs> yeah and i know that we touch them i know that we touch their hearts and and you know eventually they kind of like open up so to so speak to me about how your buddhism and also your turning point you know and and how that's enriched basically your environment and everybody in it well the turning point was easy. There was, a, uh, there was a, an insert on carte blanche in 2004 on an undercover footage section that was shown on the treatment of chickens on KFC farms. And that was it. So that was easy. Um, I've always been interested in Buddhism, even in late primary, early high school years, because it just made sense to me, because it is not about relying on anybody or anything else. Um, if good things happen, it's because I have worked to make them happen. If bad things happen, on my own head be it. Um, and so that, that I accept responsibility for, for everything that happens in my own life. And Buddhism is not about worshipping a god, because Buddha was not a god. He was just a person. Um, and it's about following his examples. And, I, and when it comes to how we are with other people, um, or how I am with other people, I try and see people as individuals. Yeah. Um, including the animals. Sorry? Including the non-human animals, yes. The human and non-human animals, but I try and see the individual and not the whole. Um, 
And, and yes, sometimes it can be difficult when, when you're on a, on a post or you're having a conversation and sort of five people sort of all chime in and say, yes, but our cavemen ancestors and we've always, and not everybody can only eat vegetables and, and all kinds of things. And, and then I, I sometimes have ugly thoughts about people in general. Um, <laughs> um, people in general. <laughs> that we make our own reality. So um, somebody asked me the other day about why the fact that I'm always chirpy. Whenever they say to me, how are you? I always say, I'm fabulous, thank you. I'm fine, thank you. It's wonderful. Always good. Um, and it goes back to a little anecdote that I came across years ago about a little old lady and somebody said to her, you never seem to have ill health and you're always in a good mood and things are always going your way. And, she, and her response was, well, I fake it for lunchtime and the rest of the day takes care of itself. So, you know, yes. your day is determined by the way you choose to wake up in the morning and see things. If I've woken up in the morning and I can stand up yes. and my hands at work that can brush my teeth and I can go for a walk no matter how hot or cold it is or how very early in the morning it is like this morning, um, then, then, then I'm already at an advantage over so many other people who are not as, as lucky. And... Yeah. If, if I have to go into my, in my larder and say, what am I going to have for lunch? I'm already more fortunate than so many other people. Mm -hmm. Even if it is two different kinds of tins of beans, I still got one tin of beans more than somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, so there are all those things. And, and if you choose to find the good, you will find it. And, yeah. and that's what, and that's, what, that's kind of been my thing. And that might be also the reason that that I did motivational, tra motivational training when I was doing optics. Um, and it might, I don't know which which fostered which. The fact yeah. that I started to, which made me more aware about choosing the positive in life, um, or the other way around. Yeah, yes. I did it. And it I really believe. Yes, and so and so you watched Card Blanche. You saw that episode. That was it. I started that was that. people straight away to saying, well, that is it. And initially, I started off with uh, no land or air animals. Yeah. Um, and I, I was really not doing dairy because of sinuses and all. So that was no, no great shakes. Um, I, was, I, I wouldn't eat eggs out. I, I bought eggs only from one guy who had one farm who had like a dozen chickens. And if he didn't have eggs this week, well, then there were no eggs. That was it. Um, and, and he assured me that the, the biggest danger for them was possibly being stomped on by a horse because they got underfoot. Yeah. Um, and that I was welcome to come and visit any time and all the rest of it. And, and we know now that that's nonsense because they've been bred to lay every day where they would normally only lay 12 to 15 a year. And they, they're not mine to take in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but that was it. So it. And for me, it was also about getting my family and, and, and social circle comfortable with the idea with this is how it's going to be in future. Yeah. So, you know, initially, if she comes for supper or go out for lunch, whatever the case may be, uh, if she comes for supper, we can still make her prawns. Yeah. Um, until they got comfortable with that. And then it was like, right now, no more prawns. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> no more. Enough, no. Enough. <laughs> Enough with this. <laughs> so I found that they'd say, right, you know, be invited around and, and I'll say, and I would automatically say, I will bring a dish. I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, I don't have to do that anymore, but in the beginning, I would take a dish that, that everybody could share so that they could see that what I was eating was just normal food. It just it's normal food. Body yeah, exactly. And, so, and it's like, what is the big deal? <laughs> you and, know? And, and so two things I want to touch on is it is incredibly difficult for people who are in a habit of complaining, in a habit of you know, not knowing, like, it's incredibly difficult for people to get out of a bad mood if that's all that they yes. sort of like keep themselves in. And I read this Tony Robbins quote, he said, like, if you tell yourself you're a smoker, then you're a smoker. But if you yes. tell yourself something else, then you're something else, right? So you that was number true. one. And number two, I don't know what it is about people that when you say I only eat plants and vegetables that they freak out and they don't know what to give you. It's like you can literally give me plants, you know, like you can literally give me vegetables and fruit. 
that's it. You can combine it. And that's what I eat, you know, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of sort of like Himalayan salt. And, but for some reason, I'm, it's just, it's odd. It's odd. It's like they've never yeah. heard of fruit and vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> and so no, I mean, that, that way back in the beginning, um, and I remember when I was still repping, um, way back in the beginning when I was, um, I, I just to digress, I, I had actually been vegetarian some years before that. Yeah. Um, and, and I fell off the wagon and it is what it is. Um, and I remember going into repping and going into this, into the, are we allowed to mention a brand name? Um, going into a steakhouse and having a baked potato. And they used to do these amazing baked potatoes. Um, and or, or being overseas and having a baked potato. Nobody's ever invited me out for baked potato. I, I don't make baked potatoes at home um, because because high carbs and if you're going to have a potato and I'm going to have a choice of potato. High carbs. You want to see my heart. So, um, but, but something as simple as a baked potato with coleslaw, which is a big thing in the UK, um, is absolutely divine, mm. you know. Um, and, and we forget the simple things. Mm. Meals don't have to be complicated. Mm. Um, and fiddle. Um, you know, I can use like 15 dishes just to get a cheese sandwich and I said it with a z to, to emphasize the difference. Um, the, the vegan cheese, the, the bees. <laughs> the bees. <yes. laughs> Because I like to, to, as I say, to faff around and, and, and I can use up the entire kitchen just to make a sandwich. Mm. Um, doesn't mean that, that A, your meals have to be complicated. But here's the other thing. I hear so many people saying, well, you know, I don't really want to, it's just for myself. Mm, excuse me. I'm quite happy to make a three-course for one person, me. Exactly. Because if I'm yeah. a person, then who else is? Yeah. You know, I think it is not your best. Yeah. You know, the best, yes, no. The best is for me. Exactly. The best, then they can use it with me. That's oh, fine. Let me just let me just kiss your crown. Let me just quickly <laughs> let me just kiss that crown on your head. And so you know, but but that's the thing. Like, why always think that you only have to save the best for last, to save the best for somebody else? I mean, like you have this one life, you have this one body, you know, like now's the time. Now is the time. And, and so many meals are so very easy to make. They just and make them look pretty and put them in a nice bowl. And um, and I mean, an example: my my mom uh, is in a retirement complex and she gets her lunch sometimes on a tray. But then she'll put a little vase of flowers. It might have just two blommies in it, but she'll put a vase, a little vase on the tray. Um, and she has a salad, it'll be beautifully laid out because she's now put it together nicely. Because, and that's clearly where I get it from. Because yeah. my mother was always very experimental when it came to food. I mean, okay, it shatters me that I know that there are people who have the same thing every Monday and the same thing every Tuesday. And, oh, it's fish and chips tonight, it must be Thursday kind of mentality. Yeah. Um, when I was growing up, um, well, we, if, 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 if it wasn't a church day, then uh, on a Sunday, I mean, then we used to listen to one of the church programs in the morning. And as soon as it was finished, my mother used to change it over to one of the Hindi channels. And so we had um, Indian music and, and, and conversation in the house. And we ate Indian and we ate Japanese and we ate Mexican and we ate um, Cape Malay. I mean, Friday nights was Kima Curry from, from uh, District 6. Um, and and, and, and but, you know, while we grew up in a, a Christian household over Easter, because it was Pesach at the same time, you know, we had uh, matzah balls and, you know, we had Tegach and, 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 and all the bits and pieces that, that go with. So, yeah. Um, so I was lucky that I was in school with a love of all kinds of food. Yeah. You know, none of this yeah. nonsense of what I don't eat green pasta because pasta must be white. 
Yeah, you know. yeah. You know, and there's this there's this stigma to it, right? And so Tony, you cannot believe the questions that I've been asked, okay? Or like the, the comments that I've been getting, you know, on the travels. And so it's been really difficult to also find vegan establishments, you know, on the coastline. And uh Jeffrey's Bay was kind of kind of good. I know in Port Elizabeth, there's a few places like the Kindred Kitchen, amazing food. Like I wish I could just bring you here. And so, but nothing really predominantly it's still very much like you know people just go to like the normal retailers and they buy what's available there and that you know it's like the rice flies and after rice um yeah. rice meats and potatoes type of thing and yes. and there's nothing wrong with that okay it's nothing but there's so much available when you step out of that um preference yes and i was yes. looking for a better word and then i thought okay well maybe you're going to help me but you didn't and so for out of that preference and you actually go into the plant-based world and it's colorful it's nutritious it's beautiful and you know and just back to you like you making things pretty for yourself or beautiful for you i mean like there's nothing more important than nourishing this body with the absolute best you know yes. and i also believe like if you make it beautiful then you eat beautiful you know and so if you want to be beautiful then you sort of like incorporate that into everything and somebody said to me the other day why do you always make something everything so fancy and i thought yeah, well, <laughs> i was like well, well, well I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm gonna look at my plate you know because you know like i eat sometimes not just even because i'm hungry like I'll, i just know okay i've got to put something in my mouth and so then i eat it so also with the long fasting you know i've got a different relationship with food now but but sometimes when i do look at my plate and it's not i'm like mm, i need to make it a little bit pretty you know and, and then i do that yeah, yeah. But the Japanese say that you eat with your eyes first, which is yeah. why their food is always so beautifully presented. Yeah. Um, so, okay, you ready for my next question? Okay. Hi. Um, we kind of answered it already, but let's do it. Let food be thy medicine, right? Yeah. We all know that plant, eating plant-based is so much healthier for you. Yes. Um, yes. you know, not to go into too many of the process stuff, but that's all in general. I mean, I've never heard about anybody that went to the doctor and the doctor said, well, you know, you got to eat more meat. No, they were like, no, you got to eat more plants and vegetables. You got to eat more fruit and vegetables, drink more water, you know, very much that thing. Yes. Um, so like food be thy medicine, your cookbooks. Yes. How did that materialize? Because you are this foodie and you do love, you know, and just so FYI, Tony makes cheese, cheese, okay? And you can order from her as well. I don't know, I think you still do that, right? And she's got a kitchen, a license to sell from her kitchen. And so use it, use it, don't lose it. Make contact, um, I know amazing cakes. And are you still busy with the Sunset Beach market? Like, do people yeah, contact you for well. orders? Like, yes, they can. Um, yeah. it, it's it's taken a bit of a, a dive because of, of COVID and, and people have yeah, their own. Course, yeah. But now and then I see somebody like pop in, you know, and I've, I don't know how to remove yes. myself from the group, but, you know, I mean, it's your thing. And so let food be like medicine, um, your cookbooks, uh, the Beauty Without Cruelty, Living Without Cruelty cookbook, and also the um, Compassionate Kitchen. Okay. How did that materialize? Like, where did the spark initiate from to do that? Uh, when I was working uh, in optics, I decided to make a cookbook uh, as a team effort, as a team building exercise. Uh, so I got something from all the from all the staff, as many who as who wanted to contribute. Um, and it was just a little thing that we that we put together. I still have it, by the way. Um, and in fact, there's a tomato salad in there that I still make and I still get rid of reviews for. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 so when we were looking for something to, to do for beauty without cruelty, and, but spread the word about um, eating plants. Yeah, and also fundraise for for BWC. I, I said, well, let's put a cookbook together. So the, for the first one, I contacted a couple of people, uh, like Claire Johnson from Agroo, for example, who gave us uh, gave us a, a recipe or two that we've included, and one or two other people. And um, and in that book, I, I put a little bit more information, sort of you know what, uh, why tofu is better than than meat, for example, and uh, what to use when you're baking instead of using egg and your best sources of whatever. 
Mm. So I put more, um, I put more explanatory notes in that one. Um, and I kind of forget actually mm. that when that there are people out there who like don't cook. Um, yeah, it's um, strange. <laughs> on the other, um, so the second one is really just more recipes, and I think there's there are one or two pages that have got some information in it. Um, but they both have, I think the first one's got 84 recipes, the second one's got 79 recipes, but they're never enough. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I could probably just fall and fall and fall, and there were things that I said I was going to put in the book, and then I ended up not doing it. And we, we deliberately made them little books because, A, it was easy to post. Um, we were, we, we'd self-published, and we were selling them ourselves, which brought down costs. Um, and... and um, uh, we actually had to do a rerun because we had sold and people were still saying, please can we get your book? And I got, I got, I gave my book to a friend, now I need a new copy and all the rest of it. So we did a second run of those. And then the other day I was, oh, I came across a box that I thought had something else in it. And it was so exciting because I found that I had a few, a few more of the first books available. Yeah, yeah. We, we were selling them. I was actually thinking of maybe getting a few from you and then having them with me, you know, and so, yeah. So that, I think that easier. would be a good thing, so, yeah. Yeah. So that was the first one. Yeah. Okay. And um, and then and then that's the second one. Yeah. And uh, and and they've they've both been marketed slightly differently because I've spoken to different people about what and how and all the rest of it. And yeah. and there were a number of people who said, well, because everybody knows you wrote the first book, this time you just put your name on on the second book. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. But that doesn't really matter because as I said. No, I think it does matter, Jenny, because you're very active. Everything goes to PwC. That's the big thing. Yeah. So it's not yeah. a percentage profit. A hundred percent of everything goes to. I make nothing out of this. I don't want to. Uh, what I make out of this is the thrill and joy of somebody buying it and making something and saying, "Ooh, that was lekker." Yeah. <laughs> well, I like it when you make it. <laughs> So I just have to tell everybody. So, like, I, I Tony phoned me the one day, and she was like, and I wasn't feeling well. Okay, and like normally when I'm sick, like if somebody phones me, I'm like, I don't even answer. I know nothing. Like, don't come to my house. Don't come and say hello to me. Just stay away from me. And she was like, Shane, can I do? Can I do something for you? And I was like, absolutely, absolutely, you can. You know. And so she's actually been the first person that I would ask to make me food I'd be like hey I'm hungry can you make me something <laughs> and so yeah no, you're amazing <laughs> it's a big line <laughs> <laughs> so so the second book I think it's important that you put your name on it because you know people do know, know you and for those who don't know Tony Tony is I mean obviously you're the chairperson for Beauty Without Cruelty now you know that's the reason for the cookbooks and obviously just you know that's also your yeah. love in action like Tony for me is love in action defined she speaks about animals every conversation is about that you can see it in her socializing and the way that she loves people you know she's not mean about it she's just you know Donnie, you're just an absolute absolute pleasure to know you know you're just one of my yeah. people yeah. and i love you so much and so you know so you do that you you make the cookbooks and i really would like us to see what we can do to actually a step even beyond you know the smaller book but actually get sort of like a collection a collector's book that we can have in the kitchen yes. with um you know like beautiful images of your food and and just the way that you cook and and anything goes in this kitchen right like anything goes like you just mix everything and anything and in the end of the day it's just beautiful. yeah it's like an explosion in your mouth Okay, you ready for my next question or do you still want to talk about foodies? We, we're going to talk more about food um, okay, before I ask you a question. So what would you say about people that say to vegans, well, you're eating, you know, basically the animal's food, like you're eating up all the habitat of hey, animals. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I have to just put it out there. Or, um, you know, but there is there is some concern, Tony, you know, because we do eat fruit and vegetables. And if you look specifically in the Eastern Cape, yeah. It's been grown specifically for humans. So now we're not eating the animals. Yeah. And, and so there's... Animals, animals, 
breeding them to the extent that we are, um, then there will be enough for them. But here's the thing. If we just stop eating the animals, and I'll say it slowly, if we stop eating the animals, then all the grain and the soy that we are feeding the animals will be freed up to, to feed the starving humans. It's really very easy. So if you're that concerned about plants, and given the fact that the animals are eating more plants than humans, yeah. stop eating the animals. Yeah. It, it I, is that. Yeah, I find that sometimes people just don't have the data. They don't have the data. And when you want to have a, a start a conversation with them, you know, and you want to kind of give them all the documentaries and the factual publications and the documentation, they're not interested to go and read. And so they, 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 they basically stay in this, um, I'm quite comfortable to just be over here and I'm just going to sit in here and kind of like be ignorant about, you know, the environment and ignorant about, you know, biodiversity and ignorant about like cause and effect of, of action. I think, I think, I think some of it is willful ignorance because nobody in this day and age who has access to the internet, which is pretty much everybody. I mean, even the poorest of the poor these days have access to a cell phone and they might not have a lot of data, but they do have access mm. um, or they know somebody who has access. And um, so I think some of it is willful ignorance because mm. if I don't know, then I don't have to make a decision. And if I don't know, I don't have to be accountable or responsible. And that's, and you know, I'm, I, I have no doubt that there are issues like that that I have the same reaction to. Um, the other is it's an automatic knee jerk because our very existence implies that they are wrong and their way of living is wrong. Of course it is, but that's not the point. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the fact that we exist means that they're caught on the back foot and they can't get out of it yes. unless they change their ways. Yeah. And this is what I have found to be interesting is that um, there are a lot of really, really good people out there who, who want to do right by things. But Beauty Without Cruelty actually requires people to make lifestyle changes. So yes, you can go and march for the rhino and you can get all excited about the elephants and you can jump up and down and scream and donate as much as you like to have uh, domestic animals neutered and homed and all the rest of it and go hysterical because the local welfare organization has put to sleep a batch of animals who couldn't be home yeah. and all the rest of it. We actually require you to make decisions and make changes. So, for example, when we talk about the humane guide, it's like, don't stop buying shampoo, just buy a different shampoo. Mm. Uh, if, you, if you care for animals, then you surely care for all animals, otherwise you're a pet lover. So you're either an animal lover or you're a pet lover. If you're a pet lover, that's fine, I accept that. If you say you're an animal lover, then you need to do your best to not cause harm. And we don't have to like all the animals, you know? Uh, I still have a bit of an issue with spiders, but I don't hurt them. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, I, even the bigger ones, I'm getting to, I mean, I've got a lot of my spider catchers and I sort yeah. of come out like Ugandi yeah. uh, with that <laughs> for the big ones. But, you know, they get taken outside. There's yeah. all the other things who make me nervous, like praying mantids. They make me nervous because they look at you. They look at you with those eyes. Turn around. <laughs> Their, every, everybody has their thing i mean like i freak out about geckos geckos yeah. I, I see a gecko and i'm like on top of the cupboard <laughs> yes. oh, okay. i'm always rescuing geckos because you know either the cat has bought one in or, or see one and, I, and I think he's going to be taken by the cat and so i'll pick them up and i will move them and, and that's sort yeah. thing. so we all have something that i understand and and you know there are some fairly strange weird very ugly looking animals out there um, yeah. of the non-human variety this time. Uh, but here's the thing. We don't have to like something. We don't have to like someone in order to recognize justice and doing the right thing. Yeah. So I don't have to like everybody I meet. It's, yeah. it's unlikely I will because I'm human and there are going to be instant clashes of personality and, and all kinds of things. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I can't be kind. Yes. And so I think no, if, I'm, if I'm kind and if I'm reasonably respectful, then then and if everybody else is the same, then then it works. I mean, you, you know, I have people that that I violently disagree with on a number of issues, but there's a weird kind of friendship 
because we look beyond the fact that I'm not just this loud mouth who likes eating and wants to eat plants, okay? Um, there's more to me than that, you know? Totally, um, totally. And that's important. But, but unfortunately, we tend, to, we, we tend to see people just as mm. something and we forget that there are other layers. So, yeah. you know, it might be a mutual love of certain books or mutual enjoyment of certain music um, or of particular parts of history or whatever, they, I mean, choose a subject. Um, we, one can find common ground. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I can either, and this is the thing. Um, I, I remember having a stand-up argument with a, a young vegan many years ago. I mean, I was also young then, but, you know, he seemed younger than me. And he and his partner would not socialize or deal with anybody in their private lives if they were not vegan. But don't even know how that feels. I mean, you know, I even went through that. Like I was, I was hectically through that. You yeah. know, and, and, and so we kind of feel like that because you get so frustrated. No, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, but, but he was quite sort of rabid in his enthusiasm. And, um, and I said, but how are you going to affect change? And how are you going to make the world a better place if you don't live in it? So, you know, you, while there are monks and nuns who stay in monasteries and cloisters and, and all the rest of it and do what they need to do, and that's, a, I have no issue with that one or the other, they're not affecting change like the people who are in the front ground who are working with the disenfranchised and the starving and the lonely and the seed and the people who've lost their way. So, you know, um, and the reason we were having a stand-up argument was because I'm very much in the world and I very much have a mouth, as you know, um, and, you know, sort of have mouth will travel. And, um, and, and it, was, it, it was our two different outlooks that, that he didn't want to have anything to do with people who hadn't yet found their way. My logic was I hadn't found my way until I saw that, and it kind of reminded me of who I was and where I was headed. Um, and, and that's that's something that we, we kind of forget, that we're all vegan. Some of us have just lost our way. So I, I tend to refer to people as pre-vegan um, because that's how we all started until our parents fed us in a certain way and taught us in a certain way, which is what they had been taught. And we can, we can no longer say, well, this is how it's always been done because the world is not the way it always was. You know, mom and dad didn't have one cow and three chickens way back when. Yeah, yeah. You know, we shared the, the milk with the calf and the calf grew, grew up and possibly had children of their own. And, you know, when the cow died of old age, everybody cried over Daisy. Um, those times are long gone, yes. you know. Um, and, and, and so we know. need to recognize that and say that we have turned animals into commodities. Yeah. And... People don't want to see the truth because the truth is ugly and it's yeah. hard and it is yeah. heart wrenching. And also seeing the truth, mm -hmm. you know, you were faced with making a decision. Because you then have to acknowledge that you're part of this process. You have chosen to behave in a certain way or make certain decisions that continues this cycle of of use and abuse and exploitation. Yeah. Um, and, it, and that's difficult for most people. And, and I, I do understand that. I do sometimes get frustrated yeah. because I think kind of when you hit our age, okay, my age, not yours, um, when, you, when you're an older adult, um, you shouldn't be swayed by peer pressure. Mm. Um, and what will the family say? Yeah. Like who cares? Yeah. Um, and, but, but I recognize that it is difficult for a lot of people. But the upside is that more and more people are making changes. Mm -hmm. And while, while I'm waiting for everybody to eat plants only and only wear cork and mushroom leather and whatever else and, you know, use AI instead of real, real animals, while we are waiting for all those things, I'm very happy about the fact that there are people who choose to have what is it? Uh, uh, plants still six or you know, there's all these little acronyms for the, for things where they they eat plants until supper and then they have what they like, or yeah. they'll have three days a week where they eat plants yeah. only, or five days a week, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. While people are making steps, no, it's not ideal. Um, 
because abuse and exploitation should never be a uh, maybe only sometimes. Yeah, um, totally. But totally. we're breaking up a little bit. Complete change. Yeah. yeah. The reality yeah. is that the overall impact is a difference. Yeah. And so, you know, like before I get to ask you my next question, you kind of like go into it and you answer it. So I'm going to ask you nonetheless. <laughs> I'm going to ask okay. you nonetheless. So I, I wanted to say, like, why is it important to stand up and be a voice for animals, not just locally, but also globally? And why do you think people have such a resistance to choosing and adopting a more kind and compassionate approach and ultimately a lifestyle? And so you kind of touched on my question without knowing that yes. I was going to, I think you're very Pietro psychic, but, um, you know, like, what's your opinion in, in terms of like, you know why it's important to to change our lifestyle and why you know people have that resistance to it especially when it comes to not eating meat you know especially yeah. when it comes to not killing an animal and putting that on your plate and not that by that i mean them you know not yes. that yes yeah yes um i am well aware of the fact that not everybody is out there to be an advocate um there are a lot of people who just lead quietly by example and that's fine yeah. But if human centric conversation, if everybody had decided that they didn't agree with the previous pre 1994 um, government's um, way of doing things and the way people were treated and had rules and regulations to follow, et cetera, and so on, and all the other terrible things, mm -hmm. if the vast majority of people had said, well, I, I totally disagree with it, but I'm not an activist. Where would we be today? Yeah. Yeah. We so need. I think we change in little increments, right? I mean. This is not okay. I am making a change and I'd like you to join me. Because the more people you start making changes, the more it will become normal. It's a little bit like having a cell phone. In the beginning, only a handful of people had cell phones, and I swore I was never going to have one because I didn't want everybody to know where I was every minute of the day and all the rest of it. But there comes a time where I think it's, I don't know if it's 60%, but it's approximately that. Approximately when 60% of the population has a cell phone, everyone has a cell phone. Yeah. And it's the same sort of thing. So if we want to see change, and it doesn't mean you have to be on a street corner with a banner that's not activism is not about doing well very often activism is about doing the really boring behind the scenes stuff um so no we don't go out there and we don't say puppies and kittens and and, and all the rest of it um a lot of it is grudge work well, not grudge um not gr the grudge is the wrong word but but it's the behind the scenes boring stuff when what you see happening on CSI in one hour on a Tuesday night, okay, that was then, um, has taken place over months. Mm -hmm. It's all the it's all the the boring stuff. It's the paperwork and the making phone calls and the writing letters mm -hmm. and the sending articles into the newspaper and saying, well, please will you speak to me about something? Um, and, and all of those things. So you don't have to be out there and visible. But if everybody does a little something, a little if something. people speak to their neighbors, yeah. I'm with a walking group in the morning and I'm, we talk about all kinds of things. And I've just been invited to a, a, an event for the promotion of a particular product. And I think, thank you so much for thinking of me, but they're not approved by Beauty Without Test. So I appreciate the offer, but no, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and she had no idea. Yeah. So I sent her her, her her FAQs, and now she knows. Yeah, and so okay. I just want to say to people, it's who know, seeds. yeah, and so for people who don't know what you know, when I say make a little lifestyle change or choose a different product, or you know, we're Tony saying like she's not going to go because they're not approved by Beauty Without Cruelty. So Beauty Without Cruelty has got the string stringent. I think you've got the stringent. yeah stringent the most stringent. Um, yeah, requirement registrations, you know, to be part or to basically have that little logo on your, um, to be accredited by yes. us, right? And so, yes. you know, what that means is that no, this product has not been tested on animals. The product that they use to make up the product has not been tested on animals, you know? Ingredients. And, and it's yes. so important because if you do not know what that looks like, imagine, um, 
a monkey or a dog or a cat or a chimpanzee or a um, rat, you know, a bunny. Did I mention a bunny? I didn't mention a bunny. Hey, me? and I yeah. imagine, you know, the top layer or top three layers of your skin gets removed and then something gets stripped on there. Or, or imagine that your, um, you know, you, what do you recall this your lids are being maybe even cut off and things are being put in there or like you know your skull is opened up and so now they're putting stuff into your brain and they're testing and so this is what it looks like for our non-human friends on the planet is that we are testing everything that we want to put into and onto our bodies everything that we think makes us beautiful or makes us enhances our you know our uh, visual look or our how for our well-being all of that gets tested on animals and and what we're saying Sweet. is there are different products testing on animals you know is nonsensical um what's that uh, what they said that regardless whether you test uh, medicine on animals you know more often doesn't mean that it would have the same effect on humans and so why are we testing on animals right Tony? Correct. yeah correct yeah. Um, and, and I think one of the things that is important to note is that um, this is not just about cosmetics, which applies to anything that's put on the body, male or female, mm -hmm. um, or household cleaners. There we have a choice. There we can make certain decisions. But we must remember also, because the general public doesn't know this, paint is animal tested. Everything that you use in your house has been animal tested. So if you paint your walls, some animal somewhere has been forced to ingest that to see what happens. Um, <clears throat> almost everything, in fact, everything that we have used, any medication that we use, yeah. and just because it's organic or it's made by somebody down the road, go into that have been animal tested. But over and above those requirements of the ingredient and the final product, which is seldom happens, being animal tested, it is also, does that company fund medical research, which uses animals. Yeah. Are they using other people's animal tested data? Um, there was a third, there was a third thing. Do, are they owned by a company that animal tests? And this is a big one because so many people have said, well, you know, company X has bought company Y and company Y doesn't animal test and they've proven it because they listed with so because they're no, it doesn't work like that because if company X was interested, they were testing in the first place. It's called greenwashing. So every time you buy a product that is that has a, a holding company, an owner company, money is going to the owner company. Yeah. So you might as well just buy from the owner company that animal tests in the first place. That's yeah. that's the reality yeah. of it. Yeah. And we know this to be true also, that very often it's about the greenwashing because. Companies have sold, um, holding companies have sold the smaller companies that, that have proven to be free of animal testing yeah. after a while because people have stopped supporting it because they're owned by the animal testing company. And the only reason they bought it in the first place is to try and say, we're fine. And we're seeing this more and more where somebody will come out with one or two things that are it's vegan and we haven't tested on animals, but oh, what about the other 98 products in your range? Yeah, It doesn't work like that. And, yeah. and a, a, a final point I need to say is we don't approve parts of ranges. So in other words, if you make 100 products and two of them are animal tested, we are not going to endorse any of them mm. because yeah. it's all or nothing. We, we And we are not going to... Um, dilute our requirements because you as a consumer happen to like a specific brand yeah the guide is there people use it or they don't use it it is a yeah. guide and it's so simple but There's we a little cannot fool ourselves. Yeah. yeah we cannot fool ourselves into saying well why would a company lie companies lie all the time it's yeah. you know they're, they're out it is a business and yeah. so and it's not necessarily outright line because it can be spin they can lie by omission, by not telling you what they do. They can lie by diversion. Oh, but we give 0.0001% to research non-animal methods every yeah. year. Um, it, you, know, you know, and of course they can lie by intention as well, um, where, where they will also say, we don't do X, Y, Z, and we don't do this, that, and the other, and then small print, they'll say, in brackets, unless it's required by law. Yeah. 
Yeah. But that means you do. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and if I sound quite pedantic and, you know, uh, for something about this, yes, because I've seen too many consumers making excuses. If you choose to use a branded animal test, that's fine. I'm not using it. It's your yeah. conscience. It is your decision. It is your money. And, you, you know, and the consequences are for you. Not, yeah. not, it doesn't work yeah. on my life. Yeah, and so what I found, Tony, is, you know, when I say to people, no, thank you, um, I don't use that, then, oh, are you too good? Are you too good to use that? Are you, do you only use expensive products? You know, um, no, like she thinks true. she's better than us. Um, yeah. What was the other thing? Um, uh, what was it? It was basically you're too good for us, um, or you you only use expenses, and so you know, and so guys, that's not what it's about, okay? Not at so all. I, I mean, don't lots always of use the most really expensive. I don't always use the most expensive products. In fact, I don't believe in the most expensive products. I just want the products. These days, you can afford to. Yeah, and and I just I don't want a product that has been tested on an animal. I don't want to be part of that cruelty, that suffering, that pain, that that industry. And so, like Tony said previously, you know, we can't get away from all of it, depending also where you are at, um, you know, situated, you know. But we we live in an online world. You can order products. You can have that sent to you. And so, I just want to recap on what you said, Tony. So, number one, companies do lie. They lie. It's marketing, it's a billion dollar industry, they will lie to you, okay? And so it's your responsibility that if you say that you love animals, is to not go there, okay? Is to not yes. support that product. If it's not good for that animal, it will not be good for you. It will not be good for you. And so imagine a paper cap, um, a paper cat on your hand. I mean, that's almost like sometimes like the most painful, right? Oh. You know? Yes. And, so, so and now imagine like something really acidic or something getting in there, and then we 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 act like little babies. Now multiply that times a thousand, okay, yeah. of what's being done to animals in the laboratory. And then Tony, you know, I mean, I remember I stopped eating meat, but I still wore leather. I still wore leather. I you still used leather yeah. handbags and leather shoes and stuff, you know, like that. And I know in South Africa, it's a little bit tricky again. You know, we're in South Africa as opposed to Europe where we've got all these funky brands that are coming out and all these sort of like plant-based options, you know, hip, hip plant-based options. But again, we do have a choice and you've got to limit your, uh, just limit and, and do your research and then go from there. But here's the thing also, um, there are very few these days, especially these days, who when they make a decision that they are going to go vegan, and I just want to clarify that veganism is a lifestyle, plant-based is a diet. Yeah. Um, when, when you make the decision to forgo any animal products, you cannot afford to go and throw out all your shoes and bags and jackets and whatever else you've got. Yeah. When you replace them, you replace them with plant-based options. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, um, and so I don't have animal based in my, in my, my wardrobes, but I mean, I've also been vegan for a long time yeah. and, and I did have a, I did have a moment, um, a number of years ago, I think I've been vegan for about two years or something. And somebody had asked, we were at a, at a gathering and somebody had asked somebody else whether she still wears leather and um and the answer was well yes and i never said a word i came home i put everything into my boot and i took it away and gave it all away and went shopping yeah okay i only wore pluckies for a while but <laughs> that was what i could afford <laughs> but but yeah but so, it is but a choice it was me because somebody had had a, you know instead of in, 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 because it was not the right it was absolutely true they were they were they were completely accurate in their in their thing that that yes i was still really never um but there was no comma however yeah. to that yeah. um but but under normal circumstances i would recommend that if you have leather and you just choose to make a lifestyle change that's fine when it wears out replace it with something that's kinder if you are able to make certain choices, 
and you were able to buy a similar pair or the, or the same looking pair of something or other um, that's in a, in, a, in a kind of option and you just start wearing those more until you forget about those, that, that also works. And then you pass it on to somebody else who can make use of it. Yeah, and, so um, for me, and for me, Tony, you know, when I was younger, I used to hate wearing leather. Like I, it put me off so much. Like I didn't want to. And then in my 20s, for some reason, I started buying you know, like leather shoes and, and that, and obviously your boots and stuff and, 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 but not a lot, you know, but I mean, I did buy it. And yes. so even though yes. I wasn't eating, you know, yes. red meat or like yes. I wasn't eating cow or, or buck or anything like that. And, and so I think, you know, we go through these changes, but it really is, you start with making little lifestyle choices and before you know but it. But it's also you, making the connection. Yeah, awesome. And, but that also, I think, allows you to make a connection, a, you know? Yeah, I, I did a radio interview with somebody um, who was a raw vegan, and um, and I can't remember if we were on or off air. Uh, I, I think we were off air. And I said, is that a leather bag? And she said, yes. And I said, but you don't eat animals. And it had never occurred to her that she doesn't eat animals for a reason, yet yeah. she's chosen you know, yeah. and, and I said quite simply, if you don't eat, eat them, why would you wear them? Yeah, and, and that's, made, that's how simple She it then is. made the connection, but sometimes it is just that simple. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. as I say, but here's the big thing. We do what we can, where we where are, we with what we have. Yeah. And that is it. Um, and it, veganism, I have, to, I have to say this, veganism is not expensive, okay? Um, now there are loads of vegan cheeses and burgers and steaks and all kinds of things. But you know what? 40 years ago, 50 years ago, and 100 years ago, there were vegans and there were none of these things and they all ate really well. They all ate delicious food yeah. and there was no issue. Yeah. And things like Hopping John. Hopping John is an American staple, you know, deep south, um, which is black eyed peas and rice. Um, beans on toast. Yes. You know, yeah, beans on toast can be amazing. When you take a group of chutney and you fry some onion and some green pepper and whatever other vegetables you have and you fry those and saute those and you, and you make luxury beans on toast, yeah, you know, sure. um, and you can, whether it's government or something fancy from the local bakery up the road, doesn't matter. The point is your food can be as exciting as you want it to be. It has got nothing to do with the expense of the ingredients. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know? and, and Tony, and I mean, you know how I eat, right? I mean, sometimes I'll eat like the plainest, like just plain, like it, like very plain, and I'm so happy with that, right? And then other times I crave like really exotic, like well put, like colorful um, dishes. Yes. And so, Tony, um, so that was the advocacy part of it. You know, I think it's so important for people to really, really step into advocating for their own health, you know, and, 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 and we can only do that when we advocate for the health of the planet and the health of, you know, our non-human friends and, and really, you know, to live a cruelty-free um, lifestyle is so beautiful. It's just so beautiful to me, you know, when I meet people and they choose not to participate in, in a certain industry or they choose to be kinder or they, it's like Jay, Jason McNamara that I interviewed um, last week. I mean, he's all about being kind yes. it's a kind kitchen you know and he's got this yes. you know these tattoos and and i mean yes. like how you know we all know what it's at some point in our lives what it's been like or felt like when somebody's been unkind to us you know whether they've said an yes. unkind word or they've done an unkind deed or they've physically harmed us like we all know what that feels like and and we've yes. all probably been there where, we, where we're like can you just be a nice person or can we just can you just be a kind person you know like at some point some of us must have asked that you know for somebody and so and then and then can we also be kind yes and compassionate you know? absolutely yeah. so my beautiful dear friend that I miss so much and you've made me so hungry oh I just want to eat I just want to eat everything in your kitchen but um, and you do know, of course, when I see you, you're going to have to make me food, like lots of, and cake, of cake as well. So let's okay. talk about, <laughs> so let's <laughs> talk about, um, hang on, let's speak about the dreaded tofu. 
<laughs> the dreaded tofu, Tommy. And um, yes. I have not met anyone more creative in the kitchen when it comes to tofu. And let's, so give me your one-on-one sort of ideas, you know, of what you can do with tofu, because you can do so much and you do a lot with tofu. Well, the interesting thing is I discovered that, that I think, I could be wrong here, but I, I think that I started doing a, a number of things years before other people had started realizing that you could make different options. So, for example, um, one of my favorite things to do is to simply take a block of tofu. Here's the thing. Tofu's got no flavor. That is its beauty because it means it sucks up anything and everything you throw at it. So if you have black tofu, that's up to you. When you get to be a level 10 uh, vegan, you go into the fridge and you some tofu and you eat it as is, okay? But until <laughs> then, you marinate it. <laughs> you marinate it um, and then you do things to it. So um, one of the, one of the uh, things that I started doing 15 years ago, I think, um, was, was taking tofu and cutting it up into either into sort of steaks or into fingers. The fingers are, are, are sort of quite handy. Rolling those fingers in, in nori cut to size. Um, and nori is, as you know, the seaweed that you use to make sushi. So what, all I would do is, um, I would, sometimes I would marinate the tofu, sometimes I didn't bother. If I didn't, if I didn't marinate the tofu, then I would add seasoning to my batter. Yeah. Um, and, they, and, and invariably, if I use, if I use nori, with tofu, which kind of is meant to be a sort of a sea life thing, then I use dill because dill and fish go very well together. So um, I would um, lemon rind and, and dill on the tofu sticks, roll it in nori, and you don't have to pat it dry. And, you don't, and the dampness of the tofu itself will seal the, the nori. You dip that into your favorite batter, choose a mixture, it doesn't matter whether it's soda water or it's a tempura or it's a rice flour and, and uh, tapioca flour only, or it's rice, use whatever you've got in the kitchen, play. The worst that can happen is it doesn't work and then you feed it off and you start again. Yeah. Um, make a dapper, a, a, dapper, a batter, dip it in deep fry. Um, if you don't want to deep fry, use a chana, a chickpea flour batter, um, that's slightly thicker, well seasoned, put onto a hot baking tray on a, on a on grease paper and grease proof paper, and stick it in the oven. Yeah. Um, it won't be as good, but it'll be still very good. And then you make a tartar sauce. And you know, there's I've got a sauce Marie Rose in the cookbook, which was like the original pink sauce that was served with uh, shrimp cocktail in the 1920s or thereabout, possibly even earlier. But you can literally go and get Be Well sandwich bread oh, and thin yeah. it down with either oat milk. Or, or dairy-free milk of your choice, or a little bit more mayo, and use that as a tartar sauce because it's yeah. ready made. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're like me, you'll chop up pickled onions, you'll chop up um, pickled cucumbers, uh, gherkins. Um, what I often do is I'll save the juice from a bottle of gherkins, I will heat it, and I will add finely diced carrots to that, to the boiling liquid, yeah. and let it cool down so that I've got pickled carrot. Okay. Um, and then you just add that to your mayonnaise and you've got, I think you can also add garlic, obviously, you can add more dough, you can add um, lemon rind, which is which is which gives it the flavor without making it runny. <clears throat> Sorry, I haven't spoken this much for a while. <laughs> and um, and there you go. The other thing is to to use a silken tofu. I love silken tofu, but it's hell to cook with. Um, but in, in a dessert, it's fabulous. So you literally. You buy silken tofu. In fact, if you buy fresh tofu from your local Asian market, <clears throat> that you must rinse. You must press that because it's been lying in that, that water. Yeah. Um, and they do change the water every day, but it's best just to press it lightly. Then throw it in your blender. Um, add some melted chocolate. Mm. And you have a, a, a sweetener of choice. So you either use best syrup or you use... Uh, um, just ordinary sugar, or you use golden syrup. I'm not interested in what you choose to do. This is not about health. This yeah. is about food. So you choose the healthy options, or you choose the standard options. That's entirely your thing. And how much? Taste it and see. And if it needs more. Uh, 
a pretty glass. In fact, if you've got those nasty little round archipel glasses that Granny had 500 years ago, and they're still there because they're indestructible, they make beautiful presentation glasses for either a soup at the beginning of a meal or a dessert. Yeah. Glass doesn't have to be used for drinking things out of. Yes, yes. Um, and, and in fact, the first time I, we had friends, we have friends, and he was adamant he was not ever going to try tofu and blah, 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 and they came out for us for supper, and he had dessert, and I said, how was it? He said, no, it was very good, thank you. And I said, well, no, you now have tofu. <laughs> <laughs> you got you to put it in there. You have to put it in there. Yeah, I had to, yeah. Um, <laughs> Because I know that people, we all, for what, for, it doesn't matter what it is, pick a subject, but we all have an inherent fear, dislike of something without any justifiable reason. Yeah. So, and here's my thing. When, when, when I've done um, advocacy for plant-based foods, and it'll be a chicken-style nugget, for example, and the parents won't taste it because they know that it's not their bird, your child that they must try Brussels sprout again because you're an adult and you won't try this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Maybe the children would have and they would and they would say, Yeah, mommy, it's my lecker and he's dad. It's you know it's very, you know, can I have another one? And then the parents would try, which I yeah. find shameful, but that's another story. Yeah. Um so try, this is the thing. Uh, so many people have said to me that they were never really interested in the, being in the kitchen before. Yeah. But now that they've changed their lifestyle, yeah. they're more interested in the, being in the kitchen and they're more interested in trying things. And they said, and I've tried all these things I've never, and I'm not talking about the, 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 the meat-like options and the cheese-like options. I'm talking about in terms of fruit and vegetables that they hadn't eaten before. Because as you said earlier, they used to the meat and do veg. Um, but now they're experimenting with different things. And if you don't like it, it's fine. Try a different way of cooking it. Yeah. I'm talking about anything, yeah. um, but to, but tofu is great. Um, I've made I've made cheese with it. Um, I've made dips with it. Yeah. You can do roasts. My best. It's incredibly lazy. You buy a block of tofu. You cut it up into. I like doing the triangle, so you cut it in slices like this, long ways, and then you cut it into squares, and then you cut them into diamonds, and then you stick it in a bowl, damp. As I said, you don't have to get technical and fancy here. You grab some flour, you grab some wild seasoning, nutritional yeast flax is an essential. You throw that all in loads of good pepper. Find good pepper. Mm. The, 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 please don't waste your time with the ground stuff. It's worth mm. investing in a pepper grinder and, and experiment with different peppers because there's so many out there. They've all got incredibly different flavors and textures and, and, yeah. and good things happen in your mouth. Um, <laughs> put in far too much pepper. Mix it all up, throw it in the air fryer, and let it do its thing. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, you know, try not to burn yourself because you're too busy eating them while they're still hot. And you know, yeah. Yeah. And the so, top of your you know, I mean, so it's very clear. You know, I think that people, when people watch this, you know, they will see like how excited we get about food. And guys, you know, like really, it's like there's no, there's nothing more fun than playing with a rainbow. Like yep. there's just nothing more fun than playing with a rainbow and everything looks good, you know, and I sit down sometimes at the table next to people who've now cooked meat and whatever. And I look at my plate and my plate is just so beautiful and it's colorful and it's just much more exciting. You know, you know what I made the other day? So I took sushi rice and I made mango. I put mango, basil, peppermint in there and, and like all sorts yes. of stuff. So I made like a beautiful, beautiful sort of like fruit sushi bowl. And, and people don't really think about that, you know, but that's yes. what I was craving at that moment. And, um, yes. and so with plant-based and also the thing is you can, you can mix like your fruits and your vegetables, you know, together right. and it just works. You don't even have to go and buy all sorts of expensive um, you know, sauces and stuff like you can use plums and apricots and nectarines and, you know, mango, all the sweet stuff, grapes and stuff yes. to sort of um, add sugar and spice and flavor to like your vegetables, you know, yes. if it doesn't have it. If it yeah. you. And, and it's like, I, I think just, out of the box. Yeah, I think out of the box. And so Tony, so um, 
I think we have to maybe do a recipe book with like, you know, ways to use tofu because you get tofu scramble, you get tofu um, <laughs> omelette, you get tofu, um, tofu on burgers, tofu crisps, tofu, 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 it's right? And, and guys, please, we're talking about tofu, we know it's soya, so please don't like, you know, that vegans is like, use up all the agriculture space and, you know, it's because of you that there's no space for this and no, that. And so. No, we don't. No, we don't, because the, close to 90% of the soy that's grown has been feeding cattle. Yeah. That yeah. are going to be killed in furniture burger. Yeah. And then the rest of the agriculture space is, is used to house the cattle, you know? Yes. Yeah. And so, so please, please. No, please, there's please only a time yeah. actually eaten as as tofu for because they, they also use soy for for other things as well that, that not directly as food or as uh, um, as soy milk or tofu or whatever there are also other other uses for it um, that are non-food related but but yeah as I said close to 90 percent of the soy grain in the world is, is going to animals so yeah. if you're worried about those all those starving millions the, the cattle are eating their food the cattle are eating that's, food, that's yeah. the, that is the reality of the situation Yes. The cats are like, no. <laughs> like <laughs> but you know, I'm laughing. I'm laughing because I'm laughing because it's true, right? We complain about people yes. in Africa starving. We complain about people in India starving. We complain about people not having food. We complain about you know that our water is getting dirty. We complain about the fact that you know there's global warming. We complain about the fact that climate change. Yeah. Some people ignore climate change. I had somebody say to me the other day, climate change isn't real. And I was like, are you for real? And I said, like, everybody that I speak to, they're like, they don't know what's up with the weather. The weather's not normally like this. Everybody, and this is across the board, across the board, across yeah. the globe. And so, you know, so making this, you know, I know that I've been laughing a lot, but taking the conversation serious is, is, is when you decide to eat more plant-based, okay, you've got options. You can either go and buy from the grocer or you can go choose to grow your own, right? Yes. More often than not, the fruits and veg, you know, like the sort of like fruit that you will have to kind of source and buy from people. Organic is obviously better than, you know, something that's got pesticides over it, but, you know, it's a start, right? And so, but our house, like um, Greta Thunder said, is on fire. It is on fire. Our yeah. water is getting polluted. And I just got a call this morning, you know, again, with regards to fracking in Namibia, where there's an underground source. Um, you know, people reached out to me, there's an underground source that's being affected, you know, that stretches all the way from South Africa and maybe Botswana. And so, you know, so all these factors come into play. Um, and then we're also sitting with the issue of the government allowing more plastic into the country and also allowing toxic waste to come into our oceans, yet again, killing all our marine life, our ocean life, you know, the plants under the ocean, everything that gives us oxygen, right? And then we talk yes. about agriculture, which is basically we're losing our rainforests um, due to deforestation, due to what? Agriculture, okay? Cutting down the trees, growing, um, oh, what is it? Palm oil, um, growing soya for feed, for animals. And then obviously, you know, where do we have to put these animals? And so that right there, guys. Yeah. And so when you choose to maybe have an apple instead of like, you know, something that's meat based you ultimately say yes to yourself and to the planet and to the environment and you also say yes to the survival of other species the survival of yes. other species that we yeah. need that we need to survive you know to continue our existence on the planet and so Tony with that um what documentaries would you suggest that people go and watch um there's an 11 minute one that is excellent and i'm trying to think of the name um but dominion earthlings mm -hmm. talks over knives mm -hmm. um they, those those are, are good ones for different reasons yeah. um and before anybody There's nothing that happens elsewhere that doesn't happen in this country. And there's certain practices that happen in this country that don't, that don't happen elsewhere. That is true. Yeah. Um, but on the whole, farming, farming standards are farming standards pretty much the whole world over. Yeah. So please don't fool yourself that because you saw five cows.
because it's all the hundreds of thousands of, of, of animals you're not seeing who are picked up yeah. because they don't want you to see because if you saw maybe it have a pain of conscience and maybe it may a change yeah exactly and you know that you're on like an hour and 20 minutes and nobody's going to watch this long yeah and i want to say you know like you know a document like dominion it's like if you sat and watched that documentary and you were maybe just listening not really looking you would think that it's a human screaming and i remember putting it on because i was doing work and you know i wanted to have something sort of playing on the side um and i got such a fright at one of the scenes because i thought that it was a human screaming and when i looked at the screen it was actually a sheep and so you know um more often than not people don't want to look at it because it's too violent to yeah. watch. and i remember somebody saying once to me i will kill that goat and i will slit its throat and i will you know stab that pig and i said okay and i took um my uh laptop not, not my laptop my ipad and i said okay i just want to show you a video and i i showed videos of what they were saying and every time that animal got stabbed or got hurt this individual would go like and i said so do you understand like you're saying something to me but then when you see it like you react yeah. in that way and so it really is a conversation guys um, I know that I've been very extreme. I've been very verbal online. I've also gone through my own process of like just being absolutely frustrated with people, um, people in my life that don't get it, people that are deliberately mean to me because I choose to sit at the table and eat salad or eat, you know, like something that's not um, animal derived. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's because there's a part of you that knows that there's a different yes. way and there's a part of you that knows that you also don't really quite agree with what's happening and so don't be afraid to um entertain you know the alternative and and also Tony just before we say goodbye I wanted to say to people in South in you know like especially our men the the culture in south africa you know yes. lying and meat eating gets promoted to you as a form of social engagement and bonding you know you yeah. bond over the fire you bond over the hunting you bond over the this, no we bond over the fires all the time yeah we just don't happen to have yeah and so people are afraid that they're going to lose you know their friendship with their dad or that you know that sort of bond with their friend and and it's bullshit and so you know food for me um, and I got asked the other day, like, why don't I want to pray um, in a particular, you know, there was a particular setup and I was like, why don't I want, why did I not want to pray? And afterwards I said, well, I, I didn't feel like praying because for me, animals are not food. And so I can yeah. sit and pray when there's like that, you know, like when it's a plant-based meal, but for me, I, I did not want to give thanks to um the fact that it's i have question. you know what i mean and so and so for me when i look at other species they are there are they are people to me like i've yes. not met one anim animal that i've worked with that doesn't have that didn't have a personality very clear out there expressive yes. personality i mean my goodness like how moody are some animals yeah. especially the ones that i've worked yes. with and so <laughs> Oh, you know, and so when you see that and you experience that with animals and especially also like, you know, our cats and our dogs, then it becomes very clear that that each and every non-human person, there is more to them than just I'm going to kill you and put you on my plate and I'm going to eat you, you know, and so for me, animals are not food to me, animals are people to me. Um, and I know that you get that. And, and so you know, your life's work or like your, basically the past decade, that's what you've been busy with is you've literally been advocating for the rights of animals in South Africa. And so to me, like, if you have any, do you have like a message or a teaching that you want to share with people? You know, like um, I asked it so beautifully the other day, I said to you, I asked Jake, I said, so if there's a message or a teaching that you would like to give to humanity, you know, that they can live by, you know, as they continue their existence on the planet, like, what would that be? Mm. 
well, there's always the golden rule, which is which everybody knows, and it's just it's kind of you know treat others the way you'd like to be treated. Yeah. Um, and and that holds true for whether you are a customer in a restaurant and you're being served by someone, um, or you're choosing what to put on your plate, or any other scenario you can think of. But but um, given that we're discussing veganism today, it really is quite simple. It's like eat leaves, not plants. You know. Yeah. Um, because here's the thing: when you choose to make changes to your eating habits, other things follow, other things happen. You start becoming more aware of other You might become more, uh, more aware of your own health. So there are no bad things that when it comes to, to, to eating plants. Um, everything else follows on. So that's what I would say, eat leaves, not plants. Thank you so much. And with that, that is my guest for today. That's Tony Brockhoven, the chairperson for Beauty Without Cruelty. Uh, you can find her on www.bwc.co.za. You can also find... BWCSA. The, yeah. W, oh, did I forget that SA? Just bwcsa.co.za. Okay, so that was the right one. But I'm also going to include the links. And then you can also find the Humane Guide, which is www.humaneguide.co.za. Yeah. And then if you want to find out what Tony's been eating and what she's been making, you can kind of go and stalk her on Facebook. Um, she visits all these beautiful restaurants and, you know, she has their dishes and it's all cruelty free. And um, if you want to find out what she's busy with, send them a, a letter, go and add the Beauty Without Cruelty social media links. Um, find out how you can get involved, find out how you can support. And then this is my invitation to, let's say, a photographer, food photographer out there and the cinema photographer, is we want to put a, a cookbook together that's sort of very colorful, much bigger than the ones that she's done now. I'm just going <laughs> to mention it, Tony, because that's, <laughs> that's my idea. <laughs> And so I would like Tony in the kitchen cooking for us. And I would like people who really feel the urge to participate and support this organization is to come on board and help us create a cookbook um, that's colorful and, um, you know, it gives you a deeper explanation into, let's say, tofu or like, you know, the deeper connection up to life. We can do some teachings in there as well. But please contact us and say hello to us and, um, and include all the links on this and Tony, I love you so much and I can't wait to see you and I can't wait to ask you to make me food. <laughs> and um, I hope to be speaking to you hey. soon again. Okay. Thank you for having me. Yes. Good to see you. Yes, Take I care. love you. I love you so much. I'll post this and I'll <laughs> edit it and, and I'm gonna connect with you soon. And thank you so much for taking the time out to speak to me today. Yes. Okay. okay. Love you. Bye. Bye.